So in this special episode, I'm off to Germany to find out what the future of travel might be like and if it's worth your time, effort and money to go on a holiday during a pandemic. I'm able to take off because of the new vaccinated travel lane, or VTL. As its name suggests, it's only for vaccinated travellers, which fortunately I am. Currently, only two countries are covered under the VTL, Germany and Brunei. Travellers flying into Singapore on designated VTL flights from both countries need not serve quarantine if they had spent 21 consecutive days in either country. But here's the catch. If you're in Singapore thinking of a holiday in any of these two countries, only Germany doesn't require any quarantine when you land. Before I go, I want to get some tips on what to prepare before my trip. And I'm getting them from consumer travel expert Lavinia Rajaram at Expedia. A recent survey by the online travel site reveals that almost half of Singaporeans feel more overwhelmed about booking a trip now than they were before the pandemic. I'm finally getting the chance to head overseas, but I'm not quite sure what I should be preparing for. Help me out, please. Flexible cancellation is the number one thing that you need to keep in mind in the event plans change that you're able to get your refunds back as quickly as possible. Okay. Also, many properties and accommodation sectors today have implemented very high health and hygiene standards and certification processes, which really gives you the sense that they have gone through all their COVID uh, cleanliness standards. So if you're planning to just explore your location with public transportation, a lot of people today in a pandemic environment just want to avoid the crowd. Mm. Um, so make your assessments, avoid the peak travel times. Mm. I think the environment today, we want to be a little bit more cautious. So I'm in Germany, but can I drive out to, let's say, Switzerland or the Netherlands? I mean, If you want to visit another country, you would have to spend 21 days in Germany before returning to Singapore. And that's the VTL requirement. But here's the thing, how is anyone going to know whether I have driven to another country? Because in Europe, the, there are no borders or checkpoints. Well, that's a, probably a risk you want to avoid uh, because you may be required to declare the places that you have travelled to. And if you lie on that, it's basically a criminal There will offense. be consequences. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Worst case scenario, what happens if I test positive for COVID? Many countries today are going to require you to serve a 7 or 14 or 21 day quarantine. This is where we do encourage travellers to take travel insurance as part of your travel planning. Some travel insurances are now enhanced to cover trip cancellation and overseas medical expenses as a result of COVID-19. But all these different terms and conditions are confusing me. So I'm getting help from Kelvin Ng at Finance really Portal Money Smart. Okay, so I've got all these different policies here. Which one do you think would be best for me? Yeah, so it's important to consider one that covers you for before your trip, during your trip, as well as after your trip. This insurer covers for trip cancellation, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? If you are diagnosed with COVID-19 in Singapore before your flight, mm. right? And because of that, you have to cancel your trip. Right. So in that case, this insurer would refund you or reimburse oh. you, right? Uh, any costs that are non-refundable. Now, quite often, I only buy my travel insurance like a few days before I fly off. So in this case, I should actually buy it well before 30 days of my departure, right? That's correct. Because one thing you should watch out for is this insurer, right? If you were to buy your policy yeah. less than three days before your scheduled departure date, uh -huh. you know, this travel cancellation benefit uh, would not be applicable. So it's important to buy your travel insurance ah. early. So for during the trip, you know, medical expenses would uh, be important to be covered. Yeah. And one thing you should take note of is quarantine allowance. Okay. Because some insurers, they cover for that. Some insurers, they don't. So for some travel insurance, uh, they require the insured to undergo, right, the PCR test before the COVID-19 cover kicks in. Oh. At your own expense, of course. Ah, right. OK. <laughs> but only some of them require it. Right, because uh, for those that require PCR tests, they might have a wider scope of cover. So how much more will I have to pay? For so using one of the insurers as an example, right? Uh, today, if you were to have a seven-day trip to Germany, mm -hmm. uh, without the COVID-19 add-on, you're paying about $40. OK. Right. With the COVID-19 add-on, you're paying an additional uh, $28. Okay, so in general, it might be about $30 more just for the COVID protection. Yep. To make sure I have the widest scope of protection, I'm picking one with a mandatory pre-departure swab test. Hello? 
okay? Yeah. Alright, over the other side, take a deep breath. And you're done. Okay. You okay? Okay, yeah. At the time I booked my air ticket, an SQ return flight to Munich was just under a thousand Singapore dollars. So I've just cleared immigration and it was really simple. Everything was totally contactless. Didn't have to touch anything, just uh, facial recognition, scan your passport and you are through. Changi Airport is now segregated into zones. So I've just crossed over from zone 2 into zone 1 and I'm told that this is the point of no return. I can't go back that way. Zone 2 is the central transit area after passing through custom checks. Zone 1 is where the arrival, immigration and baggage claim halls are at and also where my boarding gate is. It's considered the highest risk zone. Within this zone, passengers coming in from high-risk countries are segregated to reduce their interaction with others. Oh, busy night. So it's comfortable, it's clean. I've taken the liberty to change my mask to an N95 mask. I just feel a little bit safer since I know I'm in a confined space. Even the crew is garbed up in protective gear. And I noticed that the toilets are sterilized several times during my trip. Medic time is right now 6.33 in the morning. Cabin crew, please prepare for arrival. So I'm out, got my bags, and it was a breeze because all I had to do was to verify my vaccination cert. Nothing else, no PCR test. That's because Singapore is not considered a risk area to Germany. Day one in Munich, Germany. My work holiday has begun. You know what I realised? No mask needed. And I'm about to discover the joys or maybe not, of holidaying during a pandemic. The Singaporean government could say, OK, if you come back, you have to go into quarantine. I'm on a quarantine-free vacation in Munich, Germany, under the vaccinated travel lane of VTL. In my hotel, masks are mandatory. Today, I'm going to visit popular tourist attractions in Munich to see how things might be different while travelling during a pandemic. Last December marked the deadliest month of the pandemic in Germany, with over 16,000 deaths reported. There were two more COVID-19 outbreaks after, a third wave in April and a fourth in August. But since then, cases have stabilised. And with about 60% of the population fully vaccinated, COVID rules were relaxed on the 2nd of September. Local tour guide Marcus Angustum, whose business grounded to a halt last year, has seen business pick up since July. And while he used to launch into the beauty of the place, now he has a different opening act. If you're outside, you don't need your mask, but if you go Inside, let's say, accommodations, retail, if you go shopping, museums, okay. exhibitions, inside, mask is needed. There's two types which are uh, necessary. You can choose between the FFP2 mask okay. you have here, or you can have your normal surgical masks. So, reusable cloth masks are not allowed. You can only pick between surgical or FFP2 masks, which is similar to our N95 or KN95 masks. You know what, Marcus, I think I'm getting really hungry. It's time for lunch. But if you want to eat inside, you need your vaccination oh, documents. Okay, okay. Do you have them with you? Yeah, yeah, let me show you what it's like. There you go. Oh, wait. Your name, first vaccination, and second. It's yeah. perfect. We okay. can eat. <laughs> okay, let's go. Yeah. 
Prior to my trip, I had downloaded my vaccination cert from Notarize, an official Singapore government portal which authenticates pre-departure tests and vaccination passports for travellers. It contains more details than your Trace Together app, like your passport number, vaccine types and vaccination dates. These are the information that will be checked before you are allowed into indoor locations in Germany. Uh, vaccine certificate? All you have to do is so now fill in this form, sir. I see. Ooh. What is this form about, Marcus? You need a registration and there, there is something written. Darf right. ich herein? Okay. May I come in? And then you just open the camera from, from your mobile phone, scan that, okay. and then already you have the link, All right. you push it, and then you okay. fill in your contact details and then right. you are done. What Marcus has shown me is similar to Singapore's safe entry contact tracing system. The Germans use check-in apps like Luca and Corona One app, but these apps aren't available in the Singapore App Store for download. So we'll have to manually fill in this form instead. Are all the vaccines recognized here in Germany? Not all. Very popular in Germany is BioNTech-Pfizer, followed by Moderna, then AstraZeneca, mm -hmm. and last but not least, Johnson & Johnson. Uh, but in Singapore, we have Sinovac. Is that recognized? Oh no, this is not recognized here in Germany. Is there any kind of uh, restriction in uh, dining out? Is there a limit on the number of people? No, not anymore. It was in the past, but now everything is allowed as long as you are outside. What if you are inside the restaurant? Inside is the same. You have to f fulfill some rules, the so-called 3G principles. And what are those uh, 3G principles? Yeah, 3G, it sounds uh, strange for foreigners, but I have to tell you, it's German words. Okay. Um, geimpft, genesen, getested. Geimpft is vaccinated, um, getested is tested, and genesen is recovered. So only if okay. you are vaccinated, or recovered or tested, you have access to all, let's say, indoor um, locations. Okay. For example, let's say museums, exhibitions, right. hotels, gastronomy, 3G um, regulations not needed in, let's say, public transport system. You are but you have must, to wear a mask. Yeah. Then you are uh, you have no problem in the public transport system. But the unpredictable nature of the pandemic is worrying me. The number of new confirmed cases in Munich crept up to over 330 on the day of my arrival. I wonder what's the risk of COVID rules tightening again during my time here. I'm meeting Professor Alright Protzer. As part of her job as a virologist, she's been closely monitoring and analysing COVID-19 figures in Munich. As more people are vaccinated, we take the numbers of patients admitted to the hospital as the marker for reactions. We really have a new, let's say, street light, okay. <laughs> which tells us whether it's green or yellow or red. Right, so green is okay, and I imagine yellow is not so good and red is the worst. Yeah. And what about today? What is the lighting level at? So the the numbers went up, but they are on the on the way down again, luckily. And our light is still on green. So when it turns to yellow, will things change? Will there be more restrictions? Yes, there will. You would have to go back to N95 masks. And people who are not vaccinated or have had the infection will not be allowed to go into restaurants or public um, areas anymore. If it then goes to red, what will happen next? That might mean that we have a new partial lockdown. And what are the chances that the vaccine travel lane could be suspended? If cases would go up here very much, then the Singaporean government could take new restrictions and say, OK, if you come back, you have to go into quarantine. There aren't really any border controls within Europe. so. How worried should we be about cross-border infection? Within Europe, we have a EU certificate for vaccinations. Otherwise, you are not allowed to freely cross the border. If you come from a country with a high infection level, you even have to um, quarantine yourself. In the case of a COVID-19 outbreak, a VTL could be called off. Or in the worst case scenario, I could contract the virus while on vacation. This is the risk we'll have to take during the pandemic. 
I'm just glad that I'm protected with a COVID-19 travel insurance. Oh, wow. But can I have just as much fun on my vacation during a pandemic? The main difference, at the Oktoberfest there were there 6.5 million people over there. Okay. And we have only 350 people sitting in here. So that's the big difference. <laughs> I'm in Munich, one of the two cities in Germany where I'm able to travel to on a direct flight without having to serve quarantine. I'm starting to feel like I'm on a vacation. Over here on my right. At least in the way I remember it to be. Oh, wow. I've hit up many attractions, tasted good food, and even watched an ice hockey game. So this is pretty cool. Here I am. It's almost like life is back to normal. Except for the fact that we're wearing masks. The city is home to the world's largest beer festival, Oktoberfest, which would have happened right here. The festival was cancelled again this year due to the pandemic. But instead, there are smaller local events and activities all around the city. I'm catching up with Christian Schottenhammel of Plana Brauhaus. He used to operate one of the largest beer halls at Munich Oktoberfest. I want to know how the Oktoberfest experience will be different for tourists this year. So he's giving me a tour of the setup before the festival opens in a week's time. So I know that Oktoberfest is going to be cancelled this year. So, so what are you guys going to do? We have a music band staying over here. We have the same decoration like uh, pretzels and, and hay decoration and all these white and, and, and blue decoration. So it's, it's, it's a kind of atmosphere like the Oktoberfest and the people that will have fun here. So what then is the main difference? The main difference at the Oktoberfest there within 16 days there are 6.5 million people over there. We have only 350 people sitting in here, so that's a big difference <laughs> a in my chance. Even though I know there's a, a large beer garden outside, I gotta take a look outside. Let's go. Can we? <laughs> oh, wow. A good spot? Great, great. Okay. Whoa. I'm ready to eat and drink some beers. <laughs> we need the beer. Oh, ooh. thank you. That's... This is our freshly brewed Oktoberfest ooh. beer, yeah? That but is a lot of beer. A bit stronger. So, yeah, you, you have to keep it carefully. Uh, you drink it uh, carefully. Mm. Outside, there will be a big band with 20 musicians. And they play this uh, very famous Bavarian music. But now in these times, it's not allowed to dance. We have to um, uh, reduce the, 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 the loudness. And, and so the people have to stay at their table. But you don't have to wear a mask. Um, only if you go inside, you have to wear a mask. Oktoberfest is a far cry from what it usually is, but it seems like people are still having a good time at the beer garden, even if it's a little more muted. My trip has come to an end, and I'm heading home today. I need a negative PCR test result to get on a VTL flight home and I've learned that the most convenient place to get it is right here at the airport, just before you fly. There are several testing options, with different price points, depending on how quickly the test results return. OK, so here we are. That's the entry area of the test centre. I've made an online booking at the Centrogene Test Centre, which required me to fast for 15 minutes. Did you drink anything or smoke in the last 15 uh, minutes? No. Are you chewing any gum? No. Do you have any symptoms? No. Okay, I just need to take the temperature. Okay. okay, it's perfect. Okay, which kind of PCR test do you need? We basically have three different options. You can get one in 24 hours. There's one which takes 75 minutes. And we can even do one that is 35 minutes. Did you say 35 minutes? I can get one in 35 minutes? You can get one in 35 minutes. Here. Wow. Yeah. Right. Yes, that's the one I want. But where, where does it, how can you do it so fast? I don't see a lab anywhere here. Um, the reason why, why the, the standard PCR takes almost 24 hours is that you need to transport the samples from here to a fully equipped lab. 
So, so you have a lab actually here? Yes. We don't need a lab. Yeah. There are more advanced technologies available now. It's called point of care analytics. So it's done all within one machine. Wow. It's a very, very simple process. Um, and the nice thing is you don't need a lab for it. Yeah. You just need to have trained people. And are the results as accurate as the ones that go to a lab? Absolutely as accurate. There are clinical studies to prove it. Germany has one of the most advanced COVID-19 testing systems in place. This test center uses a saliva test instead of the nasal swab we're used to. Using big data technology, which computes and analyzes large volumes of complex data, the point of contact analytics machine is able to test saliva samples remotely and produce results quickly. Usually we do it up the nose, this one was back in the throat and she kind of dug in, so a little bit uncomfortable, but it's over in a jiffy. Okay, so I've just taken my test. How are they going to send me the results? After the 35 minutes, you will just receive an email. Um, in the email, there's a link. If you activate the link, that takes you directly to the, to the report. Um, the report can be used then for your flight with, with the airline. Now, I don't want this to happen, but what happens if I get a positive result and I have the virus. You will be notified immediately. Automatically, also the health authorities, they will get in touch with you directly to provide further advice. Which means I can't get on the plane. No, you won't be able to, to get on the plane. So having these test centers at the airport make it really convenient. It means I don't have to spend the last 48 hours running around the city looking for a place to take my PCR test. But with convenience, there's always a price to pay. I am getting my results in 35 minutes and it's costing me almost 400 Singapore dollars. My PCR test results. Luckily, I'm negative. And we're on our way home. I'm back at Changi Airport, but I can't just go home yet. We're ushered through customs, I get my bags, and it's straight into another swab station. But unlike in Germany, I'm only getting my results some six hours later. I have to self-isolate until I receive my negative PCR test results. Yay, I'm cleared! But that's not the end of it. There are two more swab tests to do on the third and seventh day upon my arrival home. So all in all, I had to do five swab tests just for this trip. <laughs> so is it worth going on a holiday during a pandemic? Well, I certainly enjoyed the experience of traveling again. Life felt almost normal. But with the VTL only open to vaccinated travellers, you're not going to be able to travel on it with young kids in tow. My son is 11, so he can't get vaccinated yet, which means family holidays are out for us right now. And there's also the cost, it all adds up. And of course, there's always the risk that you may come home infected. Still, I'm hopeful that the more countries with high vaccination rates like Canada and Mauritius may be opened up for quarantine-free travel for Singapore travellers in time to come.